as we all know earth's climate is not changing faster than at any point in the history of modern civilization primarily as a result of human activities in this context you have probably also heard of the phrase carbon footprint multiple times during discussions on environmental pollution and global warming in fact carbon footprint has become a novel slang with the explosion of information that has emerged about climate change hello i am neelam mishra welcome back to our channel join me here to understand this catch phrase carbon footprint through this video i will explain what is a carbon footprint what are the benefits of carbon footprinting and how can we reduce carbon footprints the concept of carbon footprint was developed for the first time by canadian ecologist william rees and mathes in 1990s according to them carbon footprint is an important component of the ecological footprint since it is one competing demand for biologically productive space in the following years the term carbon footprint is thought to have been popularized by an advertising campaign launched by british petroleum which encouraged people to check their own carbon footprint and go on a low carbon diet so with this overview what does a carbon footprint exactly mean in simple words a carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases including carbon dioxide and methane that are generated by our actions in a given time frame usually a carbon footprint is calculated for the time period of a year later on right camp and williams defined carbon footprint as a measure of total amount of greenhouse gas emissions of a defined population system or activity considering all relevant sources sink and storage within the spatial and temporal boundary calculated as carbon dioxide equivalent using the relevant 100 years global warming potential according to who a carbon footprint is a measure of the impact of our activities on the amount of carbon dioxide produced through the burning of fossil fuels expressed as a weight of carbon dioxide or equivalent produced in tons the main influences of carbon footprints are population economic outputs energy consumption and carbon intensity of the economy electricity alone is responsible for about 37% of carbon dioxide emissions india is the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after china and united states and accounts for about 6.8% of the total global emissions however the average carbon footprint of every person in india is very low and it is estimated to be 0.56 tons per year the per capita carbon footprint is highest in united states at present now we are going to talk about the classification of carbon footprints carbon footprints can be classified as primary and secondary carbon footprints primary carbon footprints represents the emissions over which an individual has direct control the remainder of an individual's carbon footprint is called the secondary carbon footprint representing carbon emissions associated with consumption of goods and services carbon footprints can also be categorized as direct or indirect 
direct emissions are ghg emissions that are created by an individual for example when i am driving my car the carbon dioxide and other pollutant gases released into the atmosphere due to burning of fossil fuel is an example of direct carbon footprint these emissions directly connect a person to their influence on the environment on the other hand indirect carbon footprint emissions are those emissions that are not directly related to the individual but the total carbon produced by the country the person lives in or is the consequence of the activities of the reporting entity that occurs at sources owned or controlled by another entity for instance the production of tires of my car has consumed electricity which was produced in a thermal power plant by the release of greenhouse gases this is called indirect carbon footprint well now we know what do we mean by carbon footprint and their types the next important question is what is the significance of knowing the size of carbon footprint or better known as carbon footprinting the methods adopted to calculate the size of carbon footprint is called carbon footprinting carbon footprint is currently 60% of humanity's overall ecological footprint and it is the most rapidly growing component of ecological footprint in reality it is very difficult to accurately calculate the total carbon footprint because of inadequate data and knowledge about the complex interactions between contributing processes including the influence of the regional input output database which accounts for all ghg's emissions in the global supply chain and allocates them to the final consumer of the purchased commodities while preparing the standard national inventories of carbon footprints the emissions associated with goods that are imported into a country but are produced elsewhere are also included as a result country's carbon footprints can increase even as the carbon emissions within its boundary decrease carbon footprint is a very important and powerful tool to understand the impact of a person's behavior on global warming reducing humanity's carbon footprint is the most essential step we can take to save our planet this is why someone who effectively wants to contribute to prevent global warming at least on an individual scale needs to measure and keep track of their personal carbon footprint another important aspect of carbon footprinting is when carbon footprint is reported within the context of the total ecological footprint this tells us how much bio capacity is necessary to neutralize the emissions from burning fossil fuels in other words it shows how much bio capacity is needed to take care of our untreated carbon waste and avoid a carbon build up in the atmosphere which enables us to address the climate change challenge in a holistic way that does not simply shift the burden from one natural system to another in fact the climate change problem has emerged because the planet does not have enough bio capacity to neutralize all greenhouse gas emissions from different sources in addition a carbon footprint also helps to identify the waste or inefficiencies within a system in terms of energy and raw material consumption 
many companies and organizations are pursuing carbon footprint projects to estimate their own contributions to global climate change once the size of a carbon footprint is known a strategy can be devised to reduce carbon footprint without a full knowledge of our footprints it is not possible to pursue the most cost effective carbon mitigation strategies so these are some of the important advantages of carbon footprinting now let's move on to the topic how can we reduce carbon footprints lowering carbon footprint cannot happen overnight by making small changes to our actions and lifestyle or by adopting good and sustainable behavior we can start making a big difference for instance how much you drive or fly how much you commute to work how you commute to work what your usual diet is the size of your household or what type of electricity the grid provides to you if we avoid car journey and favor walking or cycling or using public transport we reduce carbon footprint at personal level as each liter of petrol burnt in a car engine emits more than 2.5 kg of carbon dioxide the most common way to reduce carbon footprint of humans is to adopt 5r strategy which stands for reduce reuse recycle repurpose and refuse refuse what you do not need reduce what you need reuse it as many times as you can repurpose the product if you are not using it anymore and recycle it so that something reaches the end of its life cycle carbon footprints can also be reduced by transitioning to renewable energy which are more environment friendly by technological developments better process and product management through changed green public or private procurement by employing carbon capture and consumption strategies through reforestation and the restocking of existing forests or woodlands that have previously been depleted by employing other carbon offsetting mechanisms by changing our dietary habits reduce the number of animal products consumed if you eat local and seasonal produce food that means less pollution from processing and transportation always use the washing machine and dishwasher only when they are full load program your energy devices so that they are switched on only while you are there in the place improve house insulation so that less heat gets out when it is cold and less heats come in when it is warm reducing the need of other devices like heaters and coolers or air conditioners in essence once people understand the impact of their carbon footprints on the planet they all need to know how they can reduce their carbon footprints if we don't do this in time a far more inhospitable world is just around the corner so let us work together and take a pledge to reduce our own carbon footprints if you find the topic of this video interesting informative and useful please like share and continue to give your feedback thank you thank you all for watching